While it may be one of the more low-key Illumination franchises compared to other series like Despicable Me and Sing, the Secret Life of Pets films still have their fans. Although the stories within these films are often seen as simple and maybe a bit familiar when it comes to certain plot elements or tropes, it's the lovable and adorable characters that have kept these films going. So let's talk about these characters. I'm Caleb with Wicked Binge and this is The Secret Life of Pets Characters Good to evil. First up, we have the characters who shine brightest in terms of morality and heroics. These characters are the good. Earning the gold medal of goodness is the Pomeranian Gidget. While she may be the most known for her fluffiness and her crush on the series' main character, Max, she still has a lot of great strengths of her own. In the first movie, we see that she is willing to go through everything and anything to rescue Max and bring him home, and is the main pet pushing everyone else forward. Now let's find Max before that rabbit does. We even see her fight off all the flush pets just to save Max. But while this pup isn't afraid to throw down, Gidget is typically very sweet natured and affectionate despite being absolutely spoiled and pampered by her owners. She's even willing to forgive Tiberius for nearly eating her. Her strong sense of loyalty also continues in the second movie, where we see her go undercover as a cat to get Max's busy bee toy back from a bunch of cats. With hardly any negative traits to speak of, we felt she more than earned our top spot. For our silver medal of goodness, we're giving it to the farm dog, Rooster. Though he may seem tough and cold on the surface, this dog certainly has his softer moments. When he first meets Max and Duke, he's just a bit standoffish, being more focused on doing his work than making friends. After all, he is the protector of the farm, able to do things like take down a fox or stop a cattle stampede with ease. However, this aloofness doesn't last too long. It's Rooster, who, believing in the method of tough love, pushes Max to overcome his fears and stop being so overprotective of Liam. When Max proves himself, Rooster continues taking Max under his wing, inviting him to howl with him and even giving him a cool bandana. Even if he's not the friendliest looking dog around, it's obvious that he cares a lot about Max and the animals he protects, which in turn pushes him to make a positive difference in their lives. Moving on to our bronze medal of goodness, we're giving it to Daisy. Considering that Daisy is just a normal bystanding dog who didn't have to get involved, it's incredibly admirable that she went out of her way to enlist Snowball's help in rescuing who the tiger cub. This poor baby kitty was being held against his will. Even with how clearly dangerous the situation was, Daisy still repeatedly put herself in danger and even went head to head with Sergei's wolves at one point. Both her bravery and her concern for other animals in need is extremely admirable. And even if she's still a relatively minor character compared to the other pets, what she does do is very impactful. She's brave, fearless, bold, kind, and always looks out for her friends. Next up, we have Pops. Pops is an aging, paralyzed basset hound who tends to take advantage of the fact that his owner is rarely home by making his apartment into a local hotspot where pets are free to come in and party as they please. While this normally would make him a pretty naughty dog, we think it's sweet that he's willing to open up his home to so many others to have fun during the day as they wait for their owners to return home. Myron, vacuum! Additionally, despite his paralysis, Pops still manages to help lead the search team for Max alongside Gidget. He's practically fearless when it comes to going in the sewers and crossing the highest sections of New York. We also see him mentoring puppies in the second film, which is incredibly sweet. Although he can sometimes be a bit flirty towards Chloe, as well as pretty grumpy and fairly rude at times, which in all honesty isn't too surprising given his age, we feel like his positives and willingness to help far outweigh those negative traits. We've finally arrived at the main star of the Pets movies, Max. Let's start with his more negative traits, as Max can sometimes be pushy and even a bit of a jerk. To be fair, this is mostly seen in the first movie, where he goes so far as to purposely break a vase to make it look like Duke did it. Though you could argue it was in self-defense after Duke started trying to push Max around. But for as bitter and suspicious 
suspicious of Duke as Max was, he does start to warm up to the bigger dog eventually. After the two of them bond and open up to each other, Max tries to help Duke find his old owner. You look great. While this didn't end very well, it's the thought that counts, and Max truly thought Duke would be happier with his old owner. During the first film's climax, Max went out of his way to rescue Duke from the dog catchers, showing just how far his relationship with Duke had come. These heroics continue in the second film, ranging from small things like him helping raise and look after Liam, to bigger things like saving the lives of Cotton and later Who the Tiger Cub. While Max can sometimes be a bit self-centered and timid, his heart is more often than not in the right place. Next up is one of the two humans that we have on this list, Katie. Simply put, Katie loves her pets, with her specifically rescuing them because she didn't want them to be forced to stay at the pound. As a pet owner, she's very patient and doesn't tend to yell at them even when they make a mess while she's away. She's affectionate, loving, and an overall warm presence. What brings her ranking down, however, is how careless she can occasionally be. Many fans feel that she could have done a better job introducing her two dogs to each other, as well as being more observant given that she completely missed how Duke stole both Max's bed and food. In the second movie, once her son Liam is able to start crawling, he also starts casually tormenting Max, and we don't see Katie or her husband correcting this behavior, but who knows if they even knew that it was going on. Of course, Max's relationship with Liam worked out in the end, but it certainly wasn't because of anything Katie did. Following her is the doggy duo, Mel and Buddy. Although they don't play a huge part in either films and aren't always the most observant or willing to help, these guys are friendly enough dogs towards other pets. Mel even helps Max find another ball for Katie in the first film. They're also seen being incredibly loving towards their owners, but can sometimes be judgy towards other owners. Like the hipster using a plastic arm to throw a ball for his dog. Chase, did you see that? Yeah, I saw it. All in all, they may just be a couple of average dogs that tend to act more as comedy relief than anything else, but average certainly doesn't mean bad. Next up, let's quickly talk about Sweet Pea. He's a sweet enough bird, hence the well-fitting name, and though he can be a bit skittish at times, he's apparently forgiving enough to still willingly hang around Chloe. This is in spite of the fact that Chloe tried eating him once. Like Melon Bud, he doesn't do that much, but still helps out on the first film's journey in minor ways, and does his job rounding out the cast of lovable characters well. Nearing the end of this tier, we have Duke. For the most part, Duke is a friendly, happy-go-lucky, gentle giant of sorts. However, he's certainly not afraid to get mean or throw his weight around if he feels like he has to defend himself. Like when he thought Max was trying to get rid of him, or when he was having an emotional breakdown at his late owner's house. I do this! Speaking of this scene, his temper also prompts him to accuse Max of trying to get rid of him when he tries to reunite Duke with his original owner, only to find out that he died. While this accusation is a bit unfounded, as Max was just trying to do something nice for Duke, we can understand Duke's distress and mistrust given how the two of them didn't exactly start off on the right paw. However, this anger in her doesn't stop Duke from performing a heroic sacrifice, getting caught by animal control so Max can escape, meaning that he won't lose Katie like how Duke lost his old owner Fred. As for Duke's role in the second film, while he may not get as much focus as he did in the first film, Duke still cares for his family, showing them plenty of love, affection, and support. Finishing off the good, we have Norman the guinea pig. Now, given that he spent three weeks trying to find his way back to his apartment room, he's not exactly the smartest guinea pig around. Nor is he the most loyal, it turns out, since he abandons the group after Gidget blows their cover to the flushed pets. He ends up getting caught by them anyway, but then joins them. We can't exactly call this an outright betrayal though, given his general lack of smarts, as well as his pleasant and friendly nature. 
He doesn't seem to fully understand what being part of the Flesh Pets entails, and he still wants to try and help find Max instead of ever seeing him as an enemy like the other Flesh Pets do. To sum it up, Norman just likes everybody and everything, including the hawk that snatched him up to eat him, and we can't really hate him for something like that. Next up are the characters who land somewhere in the middle, having both good and bad moments. Welcome to the gray area. Starting off this tier is the always hungry Chloe. Somewhat apathetic, aloof, and snarky for the most part, it may seem like she doesn't care much about the other pets or about anything that's not food. However, this meanness is only surface level. While she may state that she doesn't care about Max's problems, she clearly cares more than she lets on, given that she's the first one to go along with Gidget's call to action. We're talking about who saved him! She also convinces the others to come along by pointing out how Max has helped them all in the past. Although she may steal food from the fridge, she still loves her owner quite a bit, immediately feeling guilty when she instinctively bites her. She also helps Gidget with her cat lessons and despite trying to eat him prior, seems to be on good terms with Sweet Pea. All in all, Chloe is a perfect example of not judging a book by its cover. Following her is the Falcon Tiberius. In all honesty, Tiberius doesn't give off the best first impression. In fact, we're sure many fans thought that he was going to be an antagonist. In his first scene, he tricks Gidget into letting him out of his cage so that he can try and eat her, although the attempt is foiled thanks to the chain around his foot. Surprisingly though, he actually regrets his actions after Gidget scolds him, and after she removes his chain, he never tries to eat her again. We can't exactly say the same for the other smaller animals of the rescue party as he is pretty tempted to eat them instead. But hey, it's good that he knows how to control himself for the most part. While his hunger for small and cute things may be a bit off-putting, Tiberius does still have a soft side, as we see him affectionately nuzzling his owner at the end of the first film. Really, Tiberius is just lonely and wants friends hence why he's still willing to control himself around them once he makes some new friends, even if there's still a small part of him that wants to eat them. Finishing off the greys is the infamous Crazy Bunny Snowball. In the first film, Snowball is all about hating domesticated pets and wanting to kill humans, being jealous of the former and wanting revenge on the latter. But while he may seem crazy and more than a little bloodthirsty, he's still generally friendly friendly to other animals, just as long as they share his goals, of course. After Max and Duke accidentally kill Viper, one of Snowball's fellow flush pets, he tries to get revenge on them. However, he's later willing to team up with Max to save Duke and three other flush pets. Hey, you know you know me too well, TD. We even see Snowball dive into the Hudson River where he manages to get the keys to unlock Duke's cage, saving the day. In that sense, maybe it makes sense that once he becomes Molly's pet, he decides to become Captain Snowball and helps Daisy with saving Who the Tiger Cup. While we couldn't quite ignore just how violent he seems towards humans, in the first film, he does do enough good to stay out of our bottom tier. We've finally come to the characters who maybe deserve a nice long stay at the pound. These characters are the bad to evil. Just outside the bottom three, we have the wolves. As the name implies, they're a pack of large and vicious black wolves that repeatedly go after Snowball, Daisy, and later Max when they try to free Who. Although they are technically technically antagonists who try to hurt the second film's heroes by chasing them down and trying to recapture them for their owner, we're gonna have to cut them just a bit of slack as they are implied to also be victims of Sergei, given that he threatens to hurt them if they don't follow orders. Even if an entire wolf pack could probably take out a lone human, we aren't going to judge the animals that aren't willing to go after a guy holding something like a whip or a gun. Taking the bronze medal of evil is the leader of the stray cats, Ozone. Weird name we know. Maybe it has something to do with all the holes in his ears. I had a fight, alright? 
with a big stupid dog. Anyway, Ozone is a feral hairless cat, being the first stray that Max and Duke meet on their adventures in the first movie. Upon first meeting them, Ozone destroys Max and Duke's colors and steals their tags for no real reason at all other than just to mess with them. Once he starts getting annoyed with the dogs, he then summons an entire army of feral cats to attack and torment them. Although Ozone was probably just trying to pick a fight, his actions are also what inadvertently make it all the more dangerous for Max and Duke to be caught by animal control, given that they would be considered strays without their collars and tags. We should also mention that he doesn't seem very remorseful of his actions, which just adds to how needlessly cruel this kitty seems to be. But real quick before we get to our next entries, if you're enjoying this video, do us a huge favor and hit that subscribe button and notification bell. We ask because we'd really appreciate the help getting to our next milestone, and we have lots more videos we'd love to share with you. Thanks so much. Taking the silver medal of evil is Sergei's monkey, Little Sergei. Since he's the only animal that Sergei actually likes, being his right-hand monkey, of sorts, he doesn't seem to care at all about the cruelty that Sergei subjects his other circus animals to. In fact, little Sergei even goes so far as to try and fight off Daisy and Snowball when they try to save Who, showing just how little sympathy he has for his fellow animals. We can't even say that he's just following orders, since Sergei wasn't present during this scene, and if little Sergei really wanted to, he could have escaped with the other animals. But but uh, hey, why leave a life of luxury, right? During this scuffle, he even tries to fire Daisy out of a cannon, only to wind up getting shoved into the cannon himself thanks to Daisy and Snowball's efforts. It's certainly a fitting end to such a bad monkey. Finally, our gold medal of evil, obviously going to the evil circus owner, Sergei. It's almost whiplash inducing just how much darker Sergei is compared to all the other antagonists we saw in the first Secret Life of Pets movie. He treats both the animals and workers in his circus terribly. With the animals specifically, he's often seen taking a whip to them and threatening to make them into coats or rugs when they annoy or disobey him. In your words, you blow it! He also tries to force Hu to jump into a pool of water for his act, not caring if the poor cub is terrified of water. Even when the animals start fighting back, Sergei doesn't hesitate to try and shoot them all. What makes him even worse is that we never see any sort of motive for all this, nor do we know anything about Sergei's background that could have made him this way. He's just a cruel and greedy circus owner who wants to make as much money as possible on the backs of innocent animals. And that's more than enough to earn him a spot at the very bottom. But let us know in the comment section if you agree with our ranking and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge our good to evil playlist where we break down the morality of the characters in your favorite cartoons, shows, and movies. But most importantly, stay wicked.